Welcome to the Monday Night Men's Forum. I am Matt DeRocher of A Farm Hop Life. Who do we have tonight? It's Christopher with Secure Coop. Homestead of Pain, and I have started putting out content this week. <laughs> nice. Uh, you gotta, you gotta say it like Randy Savage. Homestead of Pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work. I'll work on that. All uh, right, you should. You should do that. You should. You should try it with your girlfriend. See if it uh, <laughs> gets you anywhere. Uh, okay. Personal events. Christopher, you're up. Yeah. Um. Excited that uh, we drove the car into the new driveway. Yay. And uh, because that's good, because I, I then laid out the solar panels where they're going to go. And that we started that uh, process. So um, got them all laid out and uh, thinking, of, you know, I might have to adjust the that a little bit before we get that going. But um, yeah, 5,000 watts of solar panels. Uh, also was looking at um, the, uh, I heard a, a really neat uh, talk on um Oh, uh, what's that chemical in the brain? Uh, dopamine. Yes. It's a dopamine. And they said that dopamine is, it, we, we think of it as the pleasure chemical, but dopamine is the is actually the motivator chemical in, in the hormone. Hmm. And, it's a lot of things. Yeah, right. Yeah, so they, the, they, they knew that. They found that out hmm. because they did a test with rats, and the rats could push a lever, and they'd get food and a mate and whatever they want. And they push the lever and they'd get it. So they'd have rats trained on that. And then uh, one of the two rats, they they killed the the dopamine in the, the rat. They used a toxin to kill the dopamine it's center right. in the brain. And they moved both rats just one mouse length away from the lever. So that all they had to do was put a little bit of effort to go and get the food or get the thing. Mm. The one that had dopamine went for the lever the one that had its dopamine killed did not hmm. and, and so i got to think about that and, and uh and uh he, his suggestion is he's talking about dopamine and, and a lot of the things that uh, artificially um boost and then drop like a rock your dopamine levels which are things like uh coffee nicotine uh social media and it, Things like that. So, oh, you know, I could uh, probably cut back on that. Did that today, and um, a pretty darn good day. So, we'll good. see if that isn't also what's dragging me down. I've got you know a number of things dragging me down. That's perhaps another one. So, gotcha. Sorry, I was laughing because Jeremy made quite the entrance, <laughs> like nice and quiet. Cracks just... the beer. Go, 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 go. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was that loud. Like, it's a directional mic. It shouldn't have picked up back here. There is a mute button. Oh, look at that. What did we have? Grant, are you on here twice? What are you doing? Um, I don't I only I don't have Whatever. one StreamYard window open. Well, you're in here twice. Well, because I'm just that good. Um. Well, I'm gonna kick I, you. I'm gonna kick both of you out. <laughs> both. Um, double I started the pleasure, making, double the fun. A, um, I would say my story is I started making content. That's my event for this week. I've just started getting out and doing that. So that's pretty much it. We I'm glad to hear that because somebody called you out. A, <laughs> I got bullied into it. Peer pressure. A, uh, hey. A Your old seeds lady are here. Update. They haven't gone out yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> we need an old lady update, Grant. Oh, or is that uh, is that an off air conversation? No, no, it's good. Uh, we're hanging out a couple days this week, so we're gonna be she'll be hanging out for a couple days. So that's gonna be good. Did uh? Oh, it's Padre. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. Sorry, Padre. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow, I'm dumb. I am so dumb. Just keep Sorry keep him that. in the waiting room. <laughs> right? Yeah, for real. Okay. Um uh Grant, did did you apologize after putting your foot in your mouth? What? Or did you not did you not do that yet? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, confused. Uh you asked me to take down some Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll leave that be. Uh, you can fill in Jeremy on your by yourself if you want. Okay, Jeremy, um, do we like donuts? What what are we doing? Personal event. Personal uh personal event. Personal. I can't turn my neck. Woke up this morning. 
Like I can't like it's like right there. Mm. I um, um I thought we were gonna have a moment of silence for your personal event. Oh, for red, yeah, she died. Yeah, yeah, for red. <laughs> yeah, that was died. quite the journey. It really was. Seventy-five thousand followers later. Wow, man, that's went, wild. Went, went from one hundred and forty-eight thousand to two hundred and twenty-four thousand. Have you buried her yet? We're not gonna talk about that. Okay. On air. <laughs> you ate her, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> There wasn't much meat on uh, those bones. Okay. Um, off air, I can tell y'all. But uh, okay, okay. I just uh, people. I, I don't know how many people see this and zero. Man. Like like thirty at least. Like thirty. Yeah, they're all at Grant's least. family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had a bunch of questions. I had several questions. Like, so what did you do with it? I just completely ignored those. I would just like dedicate a garden bed to her. It's, it's called the circle of life, friends. Right. It's called the exactly. circle of life. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, okay. my, yeah. The yeah. So personal event, I guess. Yeah, red dot. Yeah, my yeah. neck just doesn't turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think about right now. It hurts. Oh, That's all I can think about. It's all. Because of the chicken? Uh -uh. Because of the <laughs> no, man. Three o'clock this morning, I woke up and I couldn't turn my neck. Oh, dang come. Turn my head. It's better ish. If if we all just move our heads, the entire podcast is to rub <laughs> it in Jeremy's face. Just like, oh man. I mean, I can yeah. move it. It just hurts. Mm. Yeah, like it's like a just, mm, it's a crick in the neck. Yep. Padre, Homestead Padre, welcome. Uh, been a little while. Would you like to share a yep. personal event? Um, I harvested radishes. I, I, I've lived a pretty uneventful life this past week, two weeks, three weeks. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Radishes. What do you do with your radishes? Pickled or what do you do? Uh, both. We pickle them or, or put them in a salad. or Sometimes I eat them like apples. So. Wow. You eat them like apples. Like what? What kind of radish? Because I am I am not a fan of radishes. Like those just basic. It's just radishes, a, but... it's just a small little globe radishes. Hmm. They got a nice sweetness to them. We get some cold snaps in here. Uh, they get a little sugar content to them. So <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like candy. Yeah. It's gardener's like candy. candy. <laughs> I'll take your um, word for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on the, on the radishes. There's plenty of other actual, actual good things to eat in a garden. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, like, so, okay. So here's my personal event, right? Um, I sent, I sent a picture to Jeremy over the weekend. <laughs> I had deer eating out of my chicken. There, I'm back. I had deer eating out of my chicken feeder, and no, no, no like, they were eating out of, out of the deer feeder. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. It's a chicken right? feeder. It's it says deer feeder on the box, but that's but not what I'm using But chicken feed for. in it. But they so, read I mean, that word deer. I mean, they, damn it. Were <laughs> they they can read. Yeah, they can read. <laughs> so I've never, there's chicken. I've feed. never seen that though. That's why they put those deer crossing signs on the road to tell yeah. the deer where to cross yeah, the road. That's, that's a good. Yeah. You know, I'm glad I ran into somebody that actually does that for a living, and I'm like, how do you get them? Like, you have to teach them to read and everything too. <laughs> she didn't think that was that funny. Um, yeah, she is like, yeah, ha ha. Like, haven't heard that one before. Um, but, but yeah, so I. Like hunting season for me is closed. Like you can, if you have a bow, you can still, you can still shoot them. And so my neighbor across the street has a bow and I'm, I'm on one side of the street in one hunting district and across the street where he's at, he's in another hunting district. Like, I don't know how that, whatever. And so I like, I texted him and I was kind of joking. I go, Will you please come over here and shoot these deer? That are, like I'm throwing rocks at them. Like I hit two in the head, <laughs> and they still didn't care. And so uh, we're going back and forth a little bit. And he didn't tell me he was coming over. Um, and so I look out the window, and he's on my deck, like in camo, and he's got his bow. And I'm like, "All right, here we go." And I, I like a couple of minutes later, here. <laughs> <laughs> so we went and shot one 
And then, uh, holy crap, we got a full house tonight. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and so, so after dinner, we all went out. Uh, he came, he came back. We went and looked for it. He ended up getting it in the liver and it made it like maybe 70 yards. And uh, Milo came out with me, my two and a half year old. And just, he was just watching. That's a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The circle yep. of life. Yep. So that was, that was our personal event. We got to see where our food comes from sometimes. Um, before we move on to Scott, welcome. Uh, Christopher, what is this? Yeah. Baiting deer is illegal. Corn piles intended for squirrels, chipmunks, and other such critters. Any deer found eating this corn will be shot. <laughs> that's, pretty much, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> and that deer was shot with a bow. <laughs> Excellent. Scott, Thriving the Future podcast. Uh, welcome. Share a personal event, please. Uh, this week we hard we had a workshop where we process chickens. So nice. some unruly roosters decided to graduate to freezer camp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How many? So I'm I'm sensing a theme. Yeah, yeah. Fre- the freezer camp theme of yeah. uh, chickens and I'm so weird. Weird. <laughs> anything. Right. Yeah. When they start drawing blood, then it's time to draw some blood. Yeah. Unruly roosters taste the best. Man, <laughs> yeah. I disagree. Like, I'm glad they're gone, but man, they I, I had one this year that was super stringy and I didn't really care for it. You sure you didn't cook it right? Uh crock pot. Oh, uh, once once it draws blood, it makes great chicken and dumplings. Yeah, it was it was a little bit tough, but you know, it was good. <laughs> what Jeremy, were you crying when you were uh eating your uh when you had your meals this weekend no look they just man, stayed away they're, from chicken. they're no man we had chicken tonight <laughs> he's like wiping uh, away his tears with like a <laughs> wing you know what's funny is like so i made that video what is what is uh i guess it was uh thanksgiving week you know basically i mean i had a chicken that was that, that looked like she was egg bound so i was gonna try to fix it do right by the chicken make a tiktok on on how yeah. to you know and like seven million views later, seven red. Million views. Oh my yeah, yeah. Gosh. Um, that chicken had a following. I'm like, well, fine. I'll make a fun. I'll make a few videos about the chicken. And Red has like her own personality, and <laughs> it. She took over my page for, well, for the two weeks like she had month. left. Yeah, for whatever. Yeah, it felt like yeah. it went on a long time. It felt like trying it. to fix yeah, it. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, she didn't make it. Nah. So. So she ended up, uh, she was doing better. Put her back in the coop with the other chickens. And she, I mean, she was just kind of weak, but she was doing fine. She was eating, she was drinking, she was getting around. And I went out one day and, and all of the feathers on her head were gone. And there was blood drawn. Uh, and they all the other chickens had pecked at her. Do you think that so they her back sensed inside. weakness or Probably. something, and took mm-hmm. took her out. I think so. Damn. Damn. Killing. Um, and so we, I brought her inside. You know, cleaned her up, got some water in her as much as I could, and thought, you know, maybe she'll make it to the night. And she didn't. So, mm. I, mean, I felt oh, bad. Man. I hate yeah. that. You know, it's it's you know, there, there. It's kind of this weird like gray area between livestock and pets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like like if we had meat birds, I wouldn't think anything of it. They're meat birds. They're bred for for you know 6 weeks or they're, they're grown for 6 weeks and then processed and it's it's they're meat birds. But these I mean we've had these chickens for two and a half years and they've each kind of got their own personality and we've named a few of them, we haven't named a few of them. We've some of them hate me and some of them I hate back and but, <laughs> you know but but like she was kind of like the cool one like she'd just come up and like hey like anytime I'd walk out there, she'd come right up to me, like, "Hey, what you got for me?" She'd let me pick her up. I mean, she was kind of like the cool, the cool chicken of the bunch. So I hated to see her go, but no, I didn't shed any tears. I got you. Yeah. So tonight, shifting completely, shifting gears. Uh, collapse now. Avoid the rush. This is something I've seen float around more recently. 
And um, it comes from, I had to look this up. It's a book called Collapse Now and Avoid the Rush, the best of the Arc Druid Report by yep. John Michael Greer. Has anyone read this book? Yes. No. Nope. Scott. Uh, uh, I'm a big John Michael Greer fan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> tell us. Okay, since you're the expert, tell us about uh, tell us about the book. Yeah. So basically, the, these are his these are essays from his website, and uh, the idea is if we're heading towards a collapse, then you can take stuff now to offset that, and basically, like he says, do it now, and then it won't hurt you as much later. Hmm. So it's similar. It's similar to what Shudra Shudra says on uh, Twitter, right? Plant yeah. trees, get out of debt, grow your own food, mm -hmm. right, and stuff like that. So uh, he's really big with the Doomer Optimus crowd. That's why you've been seeing it a lot lately. Mm -hmm. jo you mean yeah. John Michael Greer is right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he's I got this uh, this book that I have called Retrotopia <laughs> that I really like. is uh, is basically like uh, alternate future of what would happen if the US broke into into not states but into regions after civil balkanization. War. Yeah, yeah, balkanization and then, you know, he uses that sort of like the old book Utopia to have a thought experiment on on how you would do it. Right. Sure. So, when I when I hear collapse now avoid the rush, I I took it as like like personally, like okay, in my mind, like let's just let's just play do? it. Yeah, exactly. Like let's just play it out. Like right, if it collapsed, like shit hit the fan. You know, mm -hmm. what would I do about food, energy, communication? You know, the six pillars or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, what would I do? And then go do that. Make sure I have those in play <laughs> uh make sure i have those in place now today while there actually isn't a collapse is that right is that how he per like yeah he he's not a prepper dude but you know yeah it's it's similar to how that. could you not be with a title like that how could you not be a prepper dude yeah it's more of a minimal it's more of a minimalist thing Hmm. Right. So okay, he doesn't own so a just car. Make do with less. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't own a car. He's very retro. Makes prepping easier. <laughs> yeah, he, he's very retro um, tech, right? So in, instead, go back to like he has some stories in one of his books about um, folks who are like living 1950s like. Hmm. Is it then, fiction or is it nonfiction? It's nonfiction. So now, retrotopia is fiction, of course, but the okay. rest of them are not right. So it's okay. basically it's basically thought experiments of to head this off and to collapse. Now, what would it take? Right. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a car. He takes the train. He moved to some small town, you know, where you could walk everywhere. And hmm. stuff like that. OK. Hmm. So I, I, I that reminds me of a story I wrote to my wife. Also, about ten years ago, I'm looking at articles. Also, ten years ago, but uh, I wrote a, I wrote an article uh, or story rather to my wife about what our life might look like if things got ugly, and in an optimistic way, like you know, we got a little farm, we we have this technology, we have that technology, we we we're doing this with our clothes, we're we have a cut on the hand and how we dealt with it. This is how we get our vitamin C. This is how we heat the water this is how we keep warm and um it was, it was to my wife to sort of inspire her into uh moving into this the same lifestyle and uh we're on our way i was looking at it again just yesterday and we're on our way to that not some things may never be realized like um i had written about building an earth sheltered um house and that has all kinds of advantages, but it's also a, a lot of work and we got our RVs now, you know, but uh, what a lot of things um, like uh, uh, we're doing, uh, you know, compost toilet. I was writing about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I just laid out the solar panels. So 
uh, we're moving along to that. There, there's a lot of things that you can do that don't have to be um, 1950s. You know, one of the, the cool thing about living in this age is we do have better understanding about, uh, you know, how to use plastics and how to use other things like that. But we can take some of the best of the old and mix it with some of the best of the new and work it together. So, yeah. It's interesting that you brought up plastic because I know Padre has specifically said, I'm trying to get rid of all plastic. Right. Now, the, um, the use that, 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 that came to my mind when I mentioned that is, well, protecting your roof, your ceilings. Uh, but in the uh, in Mike Ayler made an underground house and he chose plastic for the reason that one, you got a vapor barrier, you're not, you're not passing water back and forth. But another is when you bury the plastic and you sandwich it, you know, between layers so that you're not exposed to the plastic if you if that bothers you. Hmm. But you're you get the plastic in there and because it's not, it's not UV down. exposed, you're never it's never gonna degrade. It's gonna sit in that soil for a long, long, long time. So you can build an, a, a you know house for he built it for fifty bucks. That was fifty years ago, but fifty bucks even then was you know three hundred bucks today. So sure. Yeah. yeah. So there's but, ways to do it that use these modern stuff that were not trapped in the 50s. So to clarify my get away from plastic, that that's more in line with uh, food storage and, yeah. and things like that. Uh, as far as consumption, what were we getting through our yeah. bodies? Uh, water and plastic bottles, things like that. Yeah. Uh, I am. I have no problem using plastic around the farm on certain things. You know, it's either. I've recycled many plastic things versus sending them to a landfill. So, you know, it, the product's already there. It's already made. It's in the environment. So instead of sticking it in a dump, I would rather find a use for it um, otherwise. But I don't want it. I don't want the microplastics and things like that in my diet, in my kid's diet. Yeah. Fair enough. I thought about sending you a picture, uh, Padre, of – so we've got, like, baby bottles and this and that. And, of course – all that is plastic. I mean, it's like, so it's like, I basically have a pile of plastic <laughs> next to our sink. And I thought I'd send you a picture just to like, get your bl blood boiling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not like, Hey, look at me, Mr. Plastic. <laughs> like, I'm not exactly like thrilled with it either, but eventually it'll not be there. So. Yeah, them, them finding plastic in the bloodstream and then like semen and things like that was uh, kind of an eye opener for me. Yeah, that so, uh, I kind of hit on that. It was like break the breaking down of the plastics, like the chemicals, like BPAs and stuff. I finally got you know my parents just kind of start switching over to glass and and, and less you know Tupperware because it's so cheap. On top of it being bad, it's just so cheap. It constantly yeah. breaks, constantly needs replacing. You don't really have to do that with glass unless you yeah. drop it. Unless you drop, drop it. it. But with like anchor hawking, I've dropped several of them and they just bounce. Yeah. <laughs> there used to it's be my a over here. I'll still break everything. Glass. Glass. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking over you. No, I, I, I was making a joke. So I'll send my son to your house. He'll break everything that's glass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have too many intake planners. You know, there used to be a company called Herky Glass. They made uh, canning jars, and man, I wanted to get some of those. They were, you could bounce them eight feet off onto concrete. You could just drop them on concrete. Boom. It's the same stuff that they make uh, foam um, glass out of. That's not, you know, you're still, that cracking glass still happens, but it happens a whole lot less than it could, you know, if it was just standard glass. It's like, it's, it's along the lines of the anchor hawking. Yeah, it's um, gorilla glass. Yeah, what they call it. it's yeah. like Gorilla Glass, right? But it's uh, but they made canning jars out of it, and there just wasn't enough demand. And mm -hmm. uh, I said, oh, gosh, I wanted to get some of those jars so badly. I didn't have the money. Yeah, I think the big question is, so what's SHTF look like to you? Good yeah, question. Yeah, that's the question. That you, 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 In order to answer how do you collapse now and avoid the rush, what does that collapse look like? Mm -hmm. So – we, I, I sent out a list with, um, along with the invite and everything. And first thing on the list was food. So like, like STHF with the food, like what's that look like to everybody? And like, how would you fix that? 
you know i mean are obviously you talking about on food. a on a personal level community level or nationwide level personal because you don't honestly you don't give two craps about two houses down from you I mean, they yeah, might I want your food. I could argue that. They might want your that. food. I care more but if it's, we were in collapse. They're not your main priority. The main sure. priority is your household. But they become an issue when they come knocking at your door. Yeah, yeah. they do. You know what? Again, oh, not your back. main I, priority. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? So, if, it's, if they're that much of an issue, a bullet fixes that. <laughs> that I don't want to be that guy, though. But but yeah. My neighbor two doors yeah. down has a bunch of cattle, so... Uh... Yeah. You see, your neighbor two doors down is going to have people wanting his cattle. So watch out for you. Jim. Better, I, I'm you one better, of them. Yeah, bro. watch out. Yeah, I mean, watch I would get him. buddy buddy and help him keep his cattle, then you just have access Community. to cattle. Exactly. I, I have made good friends with him, and we've we've yeah. conversed on this before. I I do a lot of vegetables and fruit. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of cattle. We can be really good friends. Good. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that's like the big end goal, though, in all of this, specifically for me, is I'm wanting to get into market gardening, market vegetable production, you know, market plant production. But if say that ever happens, once I have my foundation done, I could flip that switch on and make that just complete personal use whenever. So I'd be I'd have enough that I could just consistently feed myself and then store enough of it for the winter to get through the winter. I ran yeah. a poll. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was going to say, look, think back to great grandparents, early 1900s. You know, they, they were all, they weren't necessarily considered preppers, but they grew the majority of their food. They preserved it through the winter and then they rinsed and repeated the next year. Like that's, like, yeah. that's what I want to get back to is victory gardens. Yeah. But so, but, but relying less on the system. And that's a lot of what I teach on my TikTok channel outside of the dead chicken. Um, but, you know, it's getting back to some of those basics. I mean, if we can offset the need for a supply chain, then if I can teach my neighbor two doors down to start a small garden, then he's not going to come knocking on my door. We got a comment here from Squinton Quinton, which I still think is so funny. I've seen him <laughs> around before. I already give my neighbors veggies from my garden. I'm already known as the on the on my block as the gardener. That's a nice title to have. That's a pro and a con with that. It's a pro because you could be the guy who they want to trade with. The con is you might be the guy they want to steal from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Are vegetables really going to be in like high demand first thing? I feel like they're going to be secondary. Like people yeah. want higher it's calorie. calorie. Depends what we're talking about. But potatoes. it's so, so low in caloric, like unless it's like potatoes, like, you know, you got to eat right. a lot of, I don't know. I, I feel like that's, that's a good thing. That's a good, like kind of gray man kind of um, level another, to have. You can even take the gray man to a next level by looking out going on a, on a walk for wild edibles, pick up your wild edible seeds, take the seeds and the transplants and put them in your garden and yeah. don't put them in neat rows. And people will think you just haven't mowed your lawn in a while. So yeah. Cause yeah. people are stupid. Yeah. They, they don't, they don't pay attention to stuff around here. We grow like wild yams all over the place, like all over the place. Wild yams. You go down a, a, a walk and people don't have no idea that there's like 10 pounds of, potatoes sitting in the ground right there so i've wow. got a book that's about I'd foraging like to see some of that yeah that, that's that sounds pretty cool yeah foraging pretty cool. a book that's on foraging in mm -hmm. the you know, southeast u.s mm -hmm. and it's yep. actually written by a guy that's within 30 miles of where i live and it's things that i can forage for in my area so we can go on a walk and find wild edibles could that... you send me the name of that book yeah shoot me a message later and remind me okay yeah also while you're walking around um use the the plant identifier app i think it's called right. Plant this right and or uh, I and it's yeah, different on look iphone at those. Or, yeah. Or, or, or android yeah sure and then you uh look at the different things and you're sitting there going this is just a weed and it turns out to be henbit which is pretty which is pretty good to put in your uh you know in your salad and mm -hmm. stuff that's exactly what i started doing like i told you after i read my side of the mountain 
That's oh, that I was started, a great book. That's ex- that I started I doing that, that with everything. I went mm-hmm. like even to like our flowers. It's like, well, what edibles flowers? That's why I started collecting perennials all in the alum family because if you need to, you can toss them in a stew, you right. know, because they're basically onions. Sure. I love that book. I read that book so many times. Did you know he wrote two sequels to it? No. They're they're yeah, also Amazon, really good. Yeah, on Amazon they only have one of the sequels. Okay. Um, eBay on eBay you should be able to find the like all three in one book. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um okay. so I went and picked up some more chicken feed yesterday, and where I pick up my chicken feed, the they have a bunch of rabbits hopping around, and the guy was telling me about them. He said they have like <laughs> Like 200 rabbits, <laughs> like, like just all around the property. Gum. And so, and so I'm like, man, I like one, I just need to like basically get off my ass and go do this because it should be like super low input. I don't want to keep rabbits in cages because they're super like temperamental and like they just die for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like if they get like half a degree too warm, they just like die. Mm-hmm. And so, and then they start like eating each other or something. I don't know. They're dumb. And so I just want to like basically have just free range rabbits. Like, wow. Maybe maybe throw up like a couple uh like straw bales for shelter, or di- start digging a hole, and they can finish it or something like that. And just have very low input rabbit. And if we ever need them, like I'll just sh- like shoot one or trap it. And so it, yeah, they'll, so they'll always be garden. there. <laughs> basically, a rabbit garden. And if my neighbors want some. Go catch one. I don't care. Like so, the deer will eat your chicken feed, and the rabbits will eat your garden. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm growing meat. <laughs> yeah, that's a good Fair way enough. to do it. That's a good Fair way enough. to do it. Yeah. But so you don't want to uh, when we were raising rabbits. rabbits, when we were raising rabbits, we did. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I call it community caging. So we took a ten by twenty old greenhouse frame, a uh, hoop house frame, uh, wired it in. And put a roof on it, protecting them from the wind, the rain, everything. And uh, they just ran around inside uh, that enclosure, just free and open, whatever they're doing. We had hay bales in there. They could uh, burrow into the hay bales, make nests, things like that. It worked really, really well for us. Nice. I'll have to try that. I just, it's just another but thing that, that and I we did, like. we did that. You know, we got eagles and hawks and everything <laughs> flying around, so there's a lot of predator protect, protection thought that went into the the community ranging. But yeah, I don't like doing the cages either. Yeah, I think they'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so I have two rabbit hutches that were given to me. What what would I use them for? If y'all don't like caging them, what would you suggest I put in them? Quail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put some quail. Okay. Small children. <laughs> I mean, oh look, if I had some children to put in them, I would. So. Aren't you working on that? What? <laughs> yeah, you got quite. your first kiss last week. Yeah, there's been several since. But <laughs> you're, oh. you're on your way. <laughs> Not quite. Just say, hey, I've got a garden. <laughs> <laughs> Has she seen your uh, moonflowers yet there? Their grant, and that's not code for something. Literally, <laughs> <Yeah. new flowers. laughs> uh, I mean, I've shown pictures, they're not, they're not, it's, it's winter now. So, you, so they, you haven't brought dead. her back to your place yet. Got you. Okay. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, that, that's not code for anything. It, that's hilarious. It's a good thing his camera is off. Right? <laughs> I'm sure he's a beat red. Oh, yeah. oh, look, okay, I tried to have my camera on, but it wouldn't work. But yeah, I am. <laughs> Squinton <laughs> said, yeah, I just dug up a lot of dock root today to put in a spot of my backyard. What is dock root? I think I've heard of it. Yeah, it's like bloody dock. It's a it's a type of, uh, what is it, a sorrel? A sorrel? S-O-R-R-E-L-L. It's a, it's a perennial green. Hmm. Everybody googling it. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a is that a like a like a gray man kind of plant? Because no one knows what right. it is. It's yeah, it, okay. people look at it and think, oh, that's a weed. Because I do it all the time and sure. I realize what it was. I have a bunch yeah. of pictures of an old dude. <laughs> Who glad is this? You, I'm glad you googled it first. 
<laughs> what is this? <laughs> I got S- what I wanted. S O R R E L L. Yeah, that's what I I think that's how you spell it. Okay, well, I ended up getting pictures of Alan Sorrell, an English artist and writer. Nah, something. it's only one L. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks I'll put for, a, I'll put a link that, in the my private history. chat. Yeah. Okay, that looks different. <laughs> right, so Bloody Doc looks like this, except that the veins and stuff are are red. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it has a little bit different. Yeah, so it's in the it's the Rumex family. Yeah, yeah, there's this all over the yard. Yep. So what other, what other, this might end up being like a six part series or something. Uh, you could probably do an hour on each. Yeah, probably. What, what other food, food things, um, for collapse now, avoid the rush. So I think, I think like for us, yeah, we've got so many months worth of like stored food. That's, you know, the rice, the beans, the, uh, long-term storage stuff. Yeah, uh, one of the things that we we buy is Thrive Life. I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but it's freeze dried food. Yeah, oh, yes. I've got three years of that. So like, but mm-hmm. like it's it's individual meals. It's individual ingredients. So it's not like, hey, here's cheesy mac. It's oh, okay. here's potatoes. Here's cranberries. Okay. Here's okay. millet. So you can still That's cook cool. with it and make your own. It's more expensive than say like a. Uh, uh, What's the the big one out there? Um, mountain House. Yeah, like Mountain House and stuff. Like it's 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 more expensive than some of that stuff, but it's it's better in the sense that you know you can still make regular meals with it, not eat the same thing ten nights in a row. Sure. Um, but you know, so we've got some of that, and then uh, you know, you can see the canned goods back here. You know, we can't you can grow and can. <laughs> I know one thing we did is we got food grade five gallon buckets and we filled them full of rice, um, sugar, salt. I, mainly for me, it was the that sugar and salt is because you can use that. Say you go hunting. Well, how do you preserve the meat? You're just not going to eat a 140 pound deer in a weekend. So mm-hmm. other than smoke it, you know, you can salt cure it, sugar cure it, whatever you want to do. So this is and, like potatoes, freeze dried potatoes. Hmm. Nice. I was looking at the shop right, right, really quick. And then also use the sugar because if you try to can any fruit you grow, well, you kind of need, kind of need some sugar for that. So pectin, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I so got, the key uh, is, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just saying I, I started getting like you know trees I can use like that have like a lot of natural pectin in it that you can add to mm-hmm. things. Um, so I've started collecting a lot of those. I know if I'm not mistaken, crab apple is one of them. And then you can use the crab apple trees to graft on other apple trees and continue that, continue that pro- progress without, you know, a store to go buy trees from. Yep. So the key is, are you practicing with your, your preps? Mm-hmm. Cause you know, when you start making beans from scratch, it's like, dang, it's this is taking same. all day long and it's a whole, and it's a whole lot of uh, water, right? So I started getting these dehydrated um, uh, refried beans from over at the health food store. And and then that cuts it out quite a bit. We, we Sorry, I'm just refried. going I'm just going shopping right now. Like <laughs> butter powder, gluten-free flour, honey crystals, cheese, <laughs> mild, chicken, it, bullion. You looking at That's the one thing I want to get yeah. is a freeze dryer. I, if you order from there, man, use my link. I get credit for that stuff. Yeah, we use we use butter powder all the time. We coat uh, fish in it when we when we cook fish. Dude, this is great. How do you make butter powder? Just freeze dry it, crunch it up. Yeah, basically. How do they do that? Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine you so would bad. start with like you would basically turn it into ghee first, right? Right. And dehydrate it, I guess. Or dehydrate it or freeze dry it. I'm not really sure. I'm just guessing. Sure. I would assume you'd have to freeze dry it because when I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put butter in a in a dehydrator. It all melt. Oh man! <laughs> so we're talking about you know what else we can do, and I I know that if things if the balloon went up tomorrow, I would I would look down. I don't know if you guys have a lot in your area a lot of Muscovy ducks. 
but man, there's a lot of Muscovy ducks around here. And I could just go and net some, bring them home, clip wings, and uh, and take those. You know, their Muscovies are great because they are just so darn hard, hardy. They're just they're like a more of a heritage breed, and mm -hmm. uh, they don't have issues. They're they're more uh, semi feral, so they just live you know out in ponds and whatever. And they there's nothing that really kills them. Um, but uh, you guys have Except a lot of Muscovies over there. What's that? I said, except for you. Except for me. You guys have a lot of Muscovies? Uh-uh. We, n nothing like that. We have an alpaca mm -hmm. farm next door and then a bunch of people's dogs walking around. So you can, eat, can those eat those. Go oh, down yeah. To like, go down to like any suburbs in any kind of we have large a park. town. We have a park and people dump their ducks when they don't want them anymore. Yeah. There. So yeah. in spring, I want to go when there's just a bunch of baby ducks walking around and then just kind of take a net and <laughs> scoop them all up. Right. <laughs> okay, so I saw this thing a while ago, and it's kind of old, and re it's like recycled and repurposed all the time. But it's like, hey, did you know that you can just go to the park and like take a duck? They're free in their park. I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. No <laughs> one's going to stop you, and then you have a duck. Can yeah. you eat Canadian geese? Well, te oh, te Good in quotations, I know, but I know they're no. mean, but but listen, if you get some baby ones, maybe yeah, domesticate yeah. Canadian goose. That's something yeah. I'm gonna put, give a put shot. them in your flock of chickens. They'll protect the chickens. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking. You know, even if they're like, you, you know, okay, they're kind of mean. They just stay on the other side of the property, <laughs> you know, but they're here. And, and you can still maybe harvest Eat them. them. I don't know. Yeah, that is one thing I really do want to do one day. Whether or not it'll get me in trouble is try to domesticate Canadian geese. <laughs> just just for the fun of it. Like, why not? Quentin, LOL, we have a pond out back, and every year we get swamped with geese. Good Quentin, problem to have. You got any baby? Catch geese? one. A few. Grab it by its big, dumb, long neck. And just, so just I've actually, it. okay, we were on the pontoon <laughs> boat one day. <laughs> And mom was now feeding, a weapon of war. <laughs> mom was feeding the geese bread, and I jumped off the boat and saddled the goose and sunk it. <laughs> Is this a game you play down in Georgia? No, I was like, hey, <laughs> and I rode a goose on, on the lake. Well, that's totally a Georgia thing. Don't don't pin that on the <laughs> as a whole. Uh, we got Georgia, Alabama, and Florida in here tonight. And, uh, and Mississippi. Yeah, I was, I was like, I'm missing one. I'm missing one. Yes, Mississippi. And Mississippi. We're well represented. I, I, I got to share, since we're just like goofing around basically right now and having fun, <laughs> I found this I, I found this TikTok that it, that it made me think of. How do I share this thing again? Oh, shoot. I, I'm not ready. <laughs> Boomer. Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it there we go okay share present share screen this tab share am i sharing audio let me know if you if you can hear this you know canada goose yeah, is a symbol of the nation right and if you got a problem with canada gooses you got a problem with me and i suggest you let that one marinate but i digress being the majestic animals that they are it's important to always treat geese with the same respect that they would treat us Get far. <laughs> no. I've been flogged by geese several times, so we have a love hate relationship. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I just I don't mess with geese. Uh, I've, I've seen them chase too many people. Goose I was one of those people. <laughs> that's why I jumped on one. I mean, just this lady just what minding her own why business. I did it. I had <laughs> like, to. I had no choice. Georgia. I had to jump on this. Yeah, it, it was like retribution. You got it this way, right? You it got was retribution. So think about it this way: you got them attracted to your garden. They're swimming in your pond, and then they kind of make that home. And somebody walks on your property, and they like, "Oh crap! There's the geese." I'm, you know, 180 degrees and going out the other way. It's like guard they geese. have an aluminum bat and then they with the geese. Yeah. Beware of guard yeah. geese. Yeah, Jeremy. I will pay you whatever it costs to um, take take Grant seeds, all right, <laughs> and attach it to like a goose neck, like in a little bow, and skip <laughs> it to Grant. Like, here's your seeds. Do you it. Gotta get it from the goose. Do it. I would <laughs> love that. I, so it would like, be worth the drive for you to just drop a goose in my driveway. It would be TikTok just, content for yeah, all three of us. <laughs> yes, for everybody. 
Do sponsored it. Sponsored by Farm Hop Life. <laughs> huh. I'm sponsored too. Because he's Vin- only like two hours away. Oh, Venmo, you gas. Oh, Venmo, you gas. He wants the challenge. I want to shoot it. <laughs> I want to shoot it. <laughs> I mean, I'll chase it first. Sit on it. Hey, here's the I'll thing. Just, yeah. yeah the rules that. are that you can't take it out before you get the seeds. You've got to get the seeds before you can take it out. That's right. That's your That's your prize. So you're going to put the seeds inside the goose? No. <laughs> yeah, do it. That's a pinata. <laughs> oh, that, that would go against community terms of service. Mm. Mm-hmm. We'll just get an actual, like, so we'll just, we'll swap it out. We'll do some fancy camera work and we'll have a pinata that looks a lot like a goose. Wink, wink. <laughs> This whole thing is going red and dark really fast. We gotta, we gotta keep it light around here. We yeah. gotta, we're talking about collapse now, save the geese or something. Save the geese. Yep, save the geese. Squinton, I keep an electric fence around my garden every year. I get a go go because the babies will get hit by it. <laughs> Can you shit me some? Oops. Uh, good. Um, I put an electric fence around the uh, chicken coop, and I have, I mean, knock on wood, have not had any problems out of critters. A big, since. big deal. So um, I lost, I lost chickens to raccoons before the electric fence, and I've had the electric fence now for two and a half years, and haven't lost. What a chicken brand to, do you use? Uh, electricity can be a great tool. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know what brand. So I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just wire. Probably it's the, uh, oh, okay. the charge controllers, the the brand that was given to me by my uh, my mom's boyfriend. He just gave it to me. Okay, that and hardware cloth on a coop. If you do just those two things, flare like it out at the bottom. Body by uh, the fight right there. Yep. Keep, yeah. I've prevented. Yeah, they can't dig up underneath the. Yeah. I've got a twenty-five by fifty too. foot run. Yeah. And so you've got the fence, but then at the bottom, I flared it out, and then yeah. Put, Dirt on you that seems down way easier than what I did. I like in my rocky soil. I went and dug down a foot the entire oh, way. Oh wow. no, yeah, that's so, oh, like man. They, oh, yeah. because if you flare it out, they will try to dig, and when they right. realize they can't dig, they give up. They don't well, realize. Nobody told me that. Well, you didn't ask me. You didn't read <laughs> didn't my book. It was then. in my book. You have a book? Yeah, uh, I got a book on coop protection, of course. So I've I've got them, I've got that either. flared out at the bottom and then I've got the electric that's that's secure cube. Cube. <laughs> that's that's not secure time to wrap up com. You got it. Uh, right. so I put out a poll a while ago, months, months ago, and I was like, how many I don't remember the question exactly. It's like how many farms are you in contact with? Like if you could not go to the grocery <laughs> store, and the most common answer is probably like one to two. Um, and obviously like three to four, there was a few and like four and five plus, like there was maybe one person that answered, but I'm curious. So like, let, let, let's just go around real quick. Uh, starting with Christopher and then around again. Um, uh, yeah. how many farms could you honestly like call up and be like, Hey, I need blah, 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 whatever food I've got now three and I could, I, I'm hoping to add a fourth one. And then there's a number of people that we are connected with in this community that not farms, but no, and I'll, they, they I'll have produce. Got, here. Yeah. I just remembered also the, the milk lady. So there's really four I could right now farm that are true farms. Nice. Yeah. That's solid grant. None. I met this me. That's, what? Yeah. You, Come on. Um, you is there anybody it. else in your class, or like, do they are they yeah, there okay. to dick around? <laughs> well, yeah, but um, yeah, no, no one else there grows produce. Hmm. Um, none of them know what they're. Not many of them know what they're going to do after class. The only ones that do are going. You call them posers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, my neighbor has a fair size garden, and when we even when we move, there we're still not going to be around anybody. Because it takes me 30 minutes to get to school, and everybody that's coming from school is coming from 30 minutes the other direction. So mm. um, not a whole lot there. I just have to take it upon myself to build enough infrastructure where I don't have to worry about it. I'll probably be the one feeding all the old people around me. <laughs> and then, Dang, dude. Yeah. 
That's a lot of that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. I yeah. mean, they could starve. I mean, but mom would be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, when it hits the fan, you gotta quit caring what people think about you. Oh, you, see you got your mom. <laughs> didn't you say you had 130 pounds of cucumbers last year? Uh, yeah, I got about 130 pounds of cucumbers last year. Um, 30 pounds of potatoes. You know, and I only had like two sweet, two potato beds. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm only growing on three hours of sun. So if if things happen tomorrow, you know, lights out, I'm cutting about 12 trees down immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm getting full sun, and then I have, you know, 70 more totes I can put down, which is another, you know, so 800. Why not cut feet. them down? Why not cut them down today? Well, That's what I'm thinking. Hopefully, in a year, we're not going to be here, and I'm going to have like pasture and got a it. whole lot of space. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got one that is in total two, maybe three that I could call on. I got one. So he's a, uh, and these are all from our local farmer's market. But the thing with us is we live, like I don't live on the farm. I don't have farmland. We live in a suburban community and we don't have any true farms within you know, our city, sure. our town. And so everybody that I know is from outside of our city and they come to our, um, our local farmer's market. So we've made connections there and I've got several that I could reach out to, but I mean, some of them are 30 to 45 minutes away. Well, it's exactly. even better. Whatever collapse probably happens. It's going to be probably more intense in the city than it is outside the city. Yeah. So right. you're probably better off that way. So didn't he just say he's in the city though? I'm in, the city. he's in the city, but he has a place to go but see, here's the thing: if it, if out it's of the city. if it's you know it hits the fan, where's your gas? Where's your car? Can you drive 45 minutes just to get food for a few days? I can, because I have you enough know. gas. Get a bicycle, right? <laughs> so okay. I uh, yeah. on that too. I had somebody ask me like, okay, well, what happens when like you can't drive anywhere? You can't. So I run these thought experiments in my head, like just oh, yeah. randomly, like yeah. I'm driving, we all do. and all the time. Like I would, I would, I was driving somewhere like 45 minutes away and there's, you know, solar, the sun's very active, solar flare. Like what happens if it fries all electricity and I'm here? How do I get back home? Um, I find the nearest bicycle, steal yep. a bicycle it's and bike home. Like, like I've had people ask me, like, what do you do when the power goes out? You offer get a bicycle. Or just steal someone else's car that didn't go out. <laughs> I like think I would, I think I have I would e offer some cash. I think I would say, I would pull out my wallet and offer cash even if I knew because that yeah, cash is not going to be, be worth much to me going forward, and I might as well give them a good feeling because I, I couldn't. Yeah. It would just bother me too much to just. Steal I mean, that. like I wouldn't take it well, out from could, underneath someone. You that could was sitting kidnap on them it. with it, you know. <laughs> yeah, you. Would. Hey, you, you're gonna come live with me now. You have yeah. food. You'll you'll be fine. Forget your family. You're ours. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Padre, Georgia. <laughs> what about Georgia? Can you hear? Me? Yes. Yeah. Um, if you count people that uh, specialize in just livestock, sheep, cattle, pigs, uh, yes. probably seven. Nice, nice, strong, solid, solid flex. Yeah, nice. Who who is your who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Uh, that that'd be the uh, Green Green Acres Creamery, the dairy farm down the road. Absolutely love going there, talking to them, hanging out with them. <laughs> that's that's nice. So they have they have dairy and beef. Um, no, they're, they're just a dairy farm. They're um, just a dairy. Yeah. Somebody, I was hearing somebody talk about like what, what they would do for, to get a, like a beef cow is buy an old dairy cow cheap, raise it for like an extra, I don't know, a couple months to a year tops. Then slaughter. Then that's it. Then slaughter it. Yeah. Huh. Right, right, on, right on the other side of my garden is a bob bar fence, and the other side of that is a cattle pasture. And uh, Joey over there has anywhere from five to twenty head of cattle at any given time. So he's uh, one of those I can call on, I can trade with. I could take him wow. several hundred pounds of vegetables. It's good. Damn. Exchange for some meat. That's a pretty sweet trade. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Honey, he, uh, he, he gets his honey from me anyway, so. There you go. Scott. Uh, I got three to five. So one of the keys is that I, there's some stuff that just won't grow on my land, like squash. The squash bugs just descend. They destroy it. So come box. up with, yeah, so come up with, uh, you know, a transfer deal at the beginning of the season and say, hey, I'm going to grow this. You grow squash. We'll trade, right? You know, so maybe they have problems with blight for tomatoes or potatoes or something like that. And then we can, uh, and then we can trade as we're going through the season, just on a normal season. So that'd be, that'd be great. I've only got like two or three. Um, one is super reliable. I go to his place often. And uh, the one is like a chicken farm just down the street from me. And then um, another one is where I used to get my raw milk from. So I haven't been there in a couple of months. Um, but I'll probably pick back up here soon. A uh, couple comments from Squinton. A lot of what I have around here set up is just a buffer for grid down, a pond full of fish, plants to attract animals, put down, put you some deer sheds in a tree and that will bring in all the squirrels. Okay, yeah, cuz the squirrels eat 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 the sheds. Yeah. Nice. And deer sheds. The closest farm near me are cotton farmers. There are a few small scale places that are close, but they are like you pick places for berries and fruit. Yeah, so come about the sheds is like so when sheds are sitting out for a while, they turn white. And you don't find them very often because when the squirrels find them, they just mow them down. And so mm -hmm. when you can go shed hunting, the shed hunters just like go out like right away because in, in certain areas, like there's like seasons for it or something. So sure. Um, okay. But yeah, that's what that's about. So what haven't we talked about that you guys would like uh, like to discuss? Since apparently we're only talking about food this episode. Yeah, well, I think um, the. Go ahead. No, you first. Well, I think the big thing is, is like, don't get stuck with the whole, you know, shit hits the fan, EMP, complete collapse stuff. Because I think we're going to see a gradual long-term collapse. Basis, and, then if they, yeah. and then if they do this central bank digital currency, they flip that on. They look at some of your tweets from 10 years ago. You oh, like yeah, something, yeah. and all of a sudden, you get your money shut off. Right? All right. Yeah. Or your badge of honor. <laughs> or, you don't get a, or you don't get a vax, and, uh, or you don't yeah. do what they say, and they flip your money off. So then yeah. what do you do, right? That's more – or like Spirko says, you lose your job. Nobody else has lost their job yet. Yeah. But, you know, that's your – SHF, your personal you know, SHTF. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, right. it's coming down the pipe. You know, you just look yeah. at look at it's like coming. like uh, Jeremy uh, Dewey. Uh, is that your name, Jeremy? Yeah. No. Okay. No, like you said, it's like <laughs> I'll, I'll go back. I've, I've, I've been there a lot donors. worse. Nineteen, you know, you talk about like early nineteen hundreds. Well, that's the Great Depression. You right. know, they grew up in that, and they like my grandparents grew up after that, and their parents had to deal with it sure. and we're going to face something worse than that All right back and, in 2010 we had in wichita in a half mile in a half mile section where there was only houses on one side of the road we had six abandoned houses foreclosed houses or just plain abandoned right in 2010 <laughs> What is that noise? <laughs> I don't know. I heard that too. Somebody's what got a noise? chipmunk in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's hiding in his pocket. What noise? Uh, there was just like a rattle, like whatever. Uh, uh, anybody but, in your so school? you had six? You had six four closed houses on one street in twenty. In a half, yeah, and in like a half mile on only one side of the street because there's only houses on one side of the street. So I mean, it's like that much. And that wasn't too long ago. So, I mean, you know, it's, we're heading that way now. And so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's good to have backup power, especially for ice storms and all that other stuff. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that was funny, I bought a generator and I'm like, okay, so it says break this in. Well, I really don't have time to do that right now. And then I decided I'd set some time apart and I turned it on and it wouldn't turn on. And then it leaked out the carburetor. 
And so if I would have waited Whoops. till the power went out, I it yeah. never would have started. Yeah, it, take, up it takes then, forever yep. to take to get a generator sent back. Wow. Because they just the the tech support. I think I was online with two hours for the person. Sure. You sure it's leaking there? And you know, and did, all did this. you unplug it and plug it back in? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, and you're supposed to run it like according to the directions, you're supposed to run it like for two hours without a load before you put a load on it. Yeah, I don't so, follow those directions. Never have, never. Yeah, I, I know, but you know, <laughs> I got I gotta fix my generator because right now it's a very heavy paperweight. Oh, right. It's but there's just, so many people start. that. You know, so like Prepper Dave and I are doing an episode on med kits, right? And uh, and so we're comparing med kits. We've got first aid kits, and we got a little bit bigger med kits. And all of his med kits were on uh, were on tourniquets and gunshot wounds because he's going to fight his way out in the oh, and when Antifa descends on his on his property, right? <laughs> and uh, I go, and then I start showing him my stuff. I go, so what do you do if you get poison ivy? What? <laughs> i die <laughs> and then the and then what was really funny was so he's got sutures he's got all this stuff and then the very first weekend of the lockdown in 2020 he's working in the garage and cuts himself so deep that he has to go to the hospital and i said you couldn't even make it through the first weekend of the pen- wow. pandemic wow. you couldn't yeah. even make it through the first weekend he did but it was so deep that he couldn't he couldn't do it one-handed I yeah. just glued it. And just I'm surprised he just didn't like uh like I will not let Scott like have this one. He just cuts off his uh, arm. Like I'm not yeah, going yeah. to the hospital. I still give him crap about it too. I said you, Good, you should make it he through the it. first weekend, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are gonna wrap up. Um Christopher. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Securecoop.com. I'm working on a uh, coop door opener with phone notifications. I got uh, another couple of bugs knocked out this weekend. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're getting we're getting really close to the beta test stage. Get on the website. There's a free ebook uh, with coop protection. And use the coupon below, Farm Hop Life Rocks. And uh, if you sign up for the mailing list, there's also a coupon. You can combine those together. Uh, the the, uh, the coop door opener uh, has phone notifications, tells you whether it opens, closes, has an issue. And I'm so confident in uh, my ability to notify you when there's an issue that if I if there is a loss of your flock and I there was and that was owing to some issue that I didn't notify you, you about, I will replace your entire flock. So get on the website, get the ebook and get in touch with me. Yes, looking forward to it, Grant. Yeah. Um, um, nope, Homestead of Pain, Homestead of Pain, on TikTok, Instagram, and other places. I've started posting, so you get look Keep forward at it. to more bad videos of you need the, me. You need the applause sound, man. Ratchet strapping a phone to my chest. There. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's TikTok. Yeah. Just copy and paste it to Instagram so other people that don't follow the CCP can watch it. Yeah. I, everything that I put on TikTok, I just yeah, put on Instagram. My, my first, the first video that I, you know, stitched with Jeremy, it, it's like, I think it's 1800 now. And then the one I posted this morning is at like, well, I actually posted last night at 12 because um, that's when I did it. It was, I think it's not at 100 now. So, you know, it's pretty good. Nice. Keep at it. I, I just Jeremy. post stupid crap on TikTok. <laughs> Some people. That's if all, I do it, it's stupid. Fine. So it's it's the dumb, entertaining stuff. Exactly. These people around. Uh, at do we like donuts on TikTok and Instagram? Come follow me, and then yeah, we got a t-shirt company, Pure Bama Apparel. Padre, I think. Yeah. Padre. Padre. Talk. <laughs> Can you hear I me got, now? Yeah. Yes. My mic my mic's being weird. All right. So Smith-Homestead.com. We make homemade old fashioned soap, hand poured candles. My wife makes homemade jewelry. My daughter does too now. She has her own page. Hey. Um, enter uh Farm Hop Life at checkout, 10% off your entire order. Yes. Thank you. And Scott. Scott Miller, Thrive in the Future podcast, finding positive solutions to thrive in the tough times ahead. It's on your fave podcast app and also thriveinthefuture.com. 
I like that you say fave every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, me up. I was it's, on it. It's short. It's short to be able to tweet it. <laughs> yeah. He I was what on it this Sunday. Yep. Yep. I still haven't listened to it, but I still haven't listened to Matt either. The best thing I heard in that was uh Grant saying if it's a free tree, it's a free dollar. And I was like, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, that I cool. mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> put it on a shirt. Yeah, Grant's so enthusiastic. You can't put him on two times. You know, like but, some people listen to podcasts on 1.5 or two times, but he talks so fast and he's so enthusiastic. You can't do that. Man, when he first, found me on, he first found me on Twitter, he just, like, dumped in my DMs. Did I? He slid I'll right into your DMs. I'll have, I'll have to scroll back up and look at it. Because then, then he added me to the Telegram, and that's where I met Matt and then all these other lovely folks. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He did that He did that to me on TikTok, too. He slid right you into the DMs. You told me to. He started showing me pictures of his setup, and I was like, you, you got to be in the group. You got to come in the group. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah those but, pictures are getting major clicks because he's got like calendar quality pictures of his chickens and and his, uh, uh -huh. you know, his tunnel with the with the raised beds and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's he, like, he's, he showed me a couple of pictures and I was like, dude, you have to post this stuff online. Like, this is right. good. You got a but lot see, of stuff. But like, I'm, no I'm, excuses. I'm no, but stop talking. I mean, I, I need a day. We need daily videos. Thanks daily. for hanging out with us. <laughs> I, I totally muted. See you guys right. later. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am Matthew Rose over <laughs> farm hop live 20 by 23 project. Uh, we're going right, to talk about the class now. <laughs> We're going to talk more about the claps now and uh, avoid the rush in future episodes. I got other topics. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Even, even <laughs> See you guys.